When you hear that glitch, it's time to thwip. What's up, guys? I'm AJ, and welcome back to another Thwip Side action figure review. And today I'm checking out the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Carapax fi Mega Fig from the Blue Beetle movie. Now, a couple things before we get into the review. First off, I want to apologize to my subscribers that I haven't uh, posted any content in almost two weeks now, pretty close. Just, you guys know how life is, very busy. I had to move my oldest son into college, and that was... You know, a sad but happy time and some work to get that done. And also problems with work. So, again, I apologize, but I'm happy to be back and giving you this review now. And I'm going to have a, a more return once again to a more steady, steady stream of content. And second of all, of course, this Carapax figure is from the Blue Beetle movie. And just my two cents, I really enjoyed the movie. My family enjoyed the movie as well. I thought it was very fun, very entertaining. Um, I did the Blue Beetle figure review for both the figures. I think they look great, as he looked great in the movie as well. And I just had a really good time with it. And if you were on the fence about the movie, I mean, I'm not here to tell you what to buy for figures or what to do for anything. But if you're on the fence about it, why not go check it out? Because you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, it's kind of sad. It kind of stinks to me that it's not doing so well at the box office because I would really love to get some sequels to that movie. It's just a lot of fun. Okay, now let's get into Carapax. As all, always, let's start with accessories. Of course, you get the card with the bio. And I do wish that for these uh, movie figures you got like an image from the actual movie and just not the artwork, like some artwork. That would have been much cooler, I think. And of course, you get the stand with a DC logo and Carapax actually comes with two uh, alternate hands to like open splayed out hands so pretty cool but I have some things to say about hands in general so we'll take a look at that with articulation okay so now let's take a closer look at Carapax and as you can see he has a very much like Blue Beetle he looks very anime anime ish <laughs> I don't think that's a word but yeah, that both the designs for both of the characters, both Blue Beetle and Carapax, have definitely have an anime vibe going on with them, and that's totally fine. I hear, I see complaints in, um, you know, on Instagram and things about Blue Beetle. He looks like Kamen Rider and things like that. But that's the design. Maybe when he was first created, that's what inspired them. But it annoys me. It annoys me when people complain about things in the movie because that's the design from the comic it's not like they are copying anything but anyway much like blue beetle has a very anime-ish look to him an anime vibe as i just said a lot of details with him and everywhere his armor i mean he looks fantastic i think get him closer i mean look the sculpt is really nice on this guy and you got the yellow and the visor with some there is some paint in there like some orange to highlight the yellow same in here same in the back here there's a little hint of orange which i think is really cool but yeah everywhere he sculpted everywhere i don't think there's a plain flat spot on his body all this armor detail i like how they painted in the orange here really cool armor design more orange armor plating he's got like a under suit i guess you'd call it and that is all sculpted as well the arms more of that orange it's all red and orange which is cool i think it looks really nice and that side that side down to the legs and of course the big shoulder pads and like these wings that helps with the anime feel <laughs> but the back there is no orange just plain but still we get all that nice detail up and down. So I th think he looks really awesome, really cool figure. And if you didn't want him for your DC collection, you could stick him into an anime collection. Maybe you could fight a Godzilla or something, <laughs> but yeah, he looks really cool. Now, while Carapax does look cool, unfortunately to me, he falls pretty short in the articulation department. Um, especially from the waist up 
for one we've got his head is on a swivel but unfortunately i think mine see how it kicks back when i turn it i think it's not turning properly and i think it's actually stressing the uh the ball peg peg or whatever is under there i was going to pop it off but it was without heat i'm not even going to try without heat but it kicks which makes me worry that it's twisting and not moving properly he like even if i he can look like down like that but it pops up so again i don't think so that's a qc problem i think i don't i don't know it has some tilt but i don't like that <laughs> um his uh shoulder pads here are on a ball so you can move them and swivel them to get them out of the way of articulation but in the long run they didn't really need to do that because his arms are quite terrible they only go up about that far from that position but you can twist and get it under the armor kind of like um going back instead of straight up and you can get to like there but still that one of they really won't won't get in the way of that this arm popped off when i was trying to move it and articulate it and i it looks like on the peg going in there wasn't like a mushroom it almost looks like there's i snapped a small piece off so i'm real care, careful with that arm so another qc problem because i didn't even put a lot of force on it i just went to go like that and it popped off so i have it on now it seems but yeah the range is only there so that's terrible so two possible qc issues there which is no fun he does have a single jointed elbow that can rotate this rotates a little up here too um his wrist does swivel there is a hinge in there but it is really tight and you could it looks like it's one of the mcfarland ones where you can turn it and manipulate it to go side to side it is stuck on both sides i can't really get it to do that so i'll have to heat it but even so because of this piece here you're not going to get a lot of range out of it anyway even if i could move it if side to side you'd probably get a little here maybe but probably not because that would crash so just basically swivel even though there's a hinge there he does have the upper torso and that moves nicely and you can arc back that far barely any crunch to speak of this piece coming down crashes into here he does have a waist swivel but it's super super tight and i can barely get it to move but it's there um, when you free it his legs do go do the splits really far because this piece of armor doesn't crash it actually goes into the soft diaper he can kick that far up that far back he does have more than a lot of mcfarland figures at the hip for articulation so not too too bad he does get the double jointed knees that go like that because that crashes but i mean that that's not a gripe i mean big chunky armor his ankle does go back that far goes up super far and you get some nice rocker and toe here's carapax next to the battle mode blue beetle from the blue beetle movie by mcfarland toys and of course he's big and beefier because he is a mega fig and i think they look really cool together so bottom line for me is that i think carapax looks really cool really awesome he's a big armored character perfect villain for blue beetle in the movie and in your display you could also fudge him into other anime type lines or anywhere you might need a giant robot filler i would say but yeah i think he looks awesome the sculpt work is really nice and i appreciate the paint hits of the orange to accentuate it where this character fails for me is in the articulation I think um, they could have done a better job engineering his arms so you could get more range of motion. I know he's bigger and beefier. I'm not talking double-jointed elbows. Singles are fine. I just think in the whole area, being able to move his arms up, I think they could have engineered it, gave him a little. Because of these covers, maybe did a bigger cutout, maybe a, a tiny bit more, so you can get a little more arm range. So he is very limited in the arms. And besides that, the QC problems the arm just falling off and it looks like piece of that that peg or whatever it is is gone and <laughs> snapped so if i'm not careful it does tend to fall off this arm and i believe the uh the ball the ball joint ball peg or whatever is getting stressed with the head so i'll have to 
try to oil that up, shock oil it or something. So, yeah, that kind of disappoints me. I've been having bad luck uh, more often than I would like with QC issues from McFarland Toys lately. I have I've spoke about um, my Carrie Kelly an ankles. That seems like to be a common problem. My Christian Bale Batman, his elbow is totally stuck in frozen heat. Nothing will free it. I can't even pop it off. And the only way to do it is probably get more aggressive and actually ruin, you know, the arm itself. Like, like mangle up the arm trying to rip it off. So, what's the other one? Oh, I had the QC issue with Donna Troy where the peg um, missed the hole and it made like a bubble <laughs> in the plastic. So, I know QC problems happen, but I, I, either I have bad luck or... McFarland Toys has to start really paying closer attention to their QC in their QC department. But anyway, as I said, great looking figure, very limited in posability, and hopefully if you pick him up, you don't you don't have QC problems. With that being said, as always, thanks for watching. As I mentioned, I'll be back more with uh, more frequent content. Now things are a little calmed down. For the time being, you know how life goes. Um, <laughs> and um, I will catch you guys right back here on the Thwip side. Later.